In this video, we're going to look at the process of electromagnetic induction. In 1830, Michael Faraday found that if you moved a wire, this is this thing here, through a magnetic field, so we've got two magnets and the magnetic field between the two, you make an electrical current. So as I pass this wire through the magnetic field, watch what happens to the light bulb this wire is attached to. Okay, do that again. So as it passes through that magnetic field, an electrical current is made. That was discovered by Michael Faraday in 1830. Faraday also tested passing magnets through coils of wire, and he found that that had a similar effect. So watch what happens to the amount of voltage as I pass the magnet through the coil of wire. Okay. I'd like you to have a think about these situations then. What would happen to the size of the voltage created if, firstly, there were more coils of wire for the magnet to pass through, the magnet was stronger, a larger magnet, or the speed of the magnet was much slower? Pause the video and then we'll discuss the answers. So we'll start with this first example then. If there are more coils of wire, there are more locations for electricity to be generated and as a result there's going to be a higher voltage created. If the magnet's stronger, as it passes through the coils of wire, it's able to move more electrons, and as a result the voltage will be higher. However, if the speed of the magnet is slower, it's moving with less speed, it's not going to give those electrons as much energy as if it was moving quickly, so the amount of voltage will be lower. If the magnet was barely moving at all, hardly any electricity would be generated. Think about what would happen if it was stationary. If the magnet was completely still, then there would be no electricity generated, even if it was located right in the middle of this coil of wire. The magnet's got to be moving to generate the electricity. The faster it moves, the more electricity it generates. Faraday also noticed that the direction of the current depended on the direction that the magnets moved through the coil of wire. So in this first example, we're starting with the North Pole moving through in this direction. Watch what happens to the current flowing through the wire. So in this example, the current flowed round in this direction. As the magnet went through this way, the current moved in this direction. Okay. Watch what happens in this second circumstance as the magnet moves in the opposite direction. Okay, The current is now negative because it's flowing in the opposite direction. The magnet is moving at the same speed, it's the same size magnet, same number of coils. So the magnitude, the size of the current is the same, but because it's moving in the opposite direction, it's now a negative current. So we're going to think now about how this process of electromagnetic induction works. We've zoomed in really closely to one of those coils of wire and we can see inside the wire there are these negatively charged particles which are electrons. As my magnet moves through this coil of wire, watch what happens to the electrons in the wire. Okay. So as the magnet passes through the coil, those electrons start to move. Depending on how fast the magnet moves through, that will link to how fast the electrons start to move. If you've got a stronger magnet, more electrons are going to move. If you then add in more coils, more electrons are going to move in coils further along. The magnet doesn't actually need to touch the wire for this to happen. The electrons are moved by the magnetic field around the magnet. So these lines represent the magnetic field and as you can see they will pass through and come in contact with the electrons in the circuit. So as the magnetic field passes through, pushes these electrons round, they start to create an electrical current. As the magnet then returns in the opposite direction, because the magnetic field is pushing them backwards, they start to move the other way. So you get this process of electrons moving backwards and forwards, backwards and then forwards again. And that's what's known as an alternating current. 
The magnetic field of the magnet moves the electrons along the wire as it passes through the coil. The magnet must be moving for that to happen. If the magnet's stationary, the electrons aren't affected by the magnetic field. Depending on which direction the magnet is travelling, that will determine which direction the current flows around the circuit. Electromagnetic induction is an incredibly important process in generating electricity. It's how an electrical generator works. A generator turns the kinetic energy of, say, a moving turbine or moving steam into electrical energy. So it takes movement, a moving magnet, and transforms that into electrical energy by passing it through or near to a coil of wire. 